Milk outside of a bag of milk outside of a bag of milk was probably the most time consuming video I've ever made, but it's also one of my favorite videos I've made so far. And whilst I got into great detail about both games, rewatching it now, I have uh, forgotten some details. One thing I didn't mention that was actually released after my video was within the Steam page, Milk Outside was featured in the game bundle called the Visions from the Ceiling Bundle. It's a dual package. Visions from is highlighted relating to Milk Outside, of course, but Ceiling Bundle is related to another game. Looking up, I see only a ceiling. Looking up, I See Only a Ceiling was developed by Silver978, an English and Italiano video game dev. Now obviously, this isn't his first game he has developed. He has developed other games in his itch.io under the name Euterium Galaxy, with a frequent collaborator artist, Cyanico. Looking Up would be published by IndieArc, a relatively small video game publisher whose game catalog I'm not really familiar with except for one game, who's Lily. A game in which you have to change your face in order to get an answer from the suspect. The game would be released on the 9th of March 2023 to pretty great reviews. Now, um, I noticed something through this research. Sainika, which I love her artwork by the way, her style is very familiar. And Euterian sounds a lot like Euterian. Oh god, no, get me off here! Putting up the game, there's already noticeable detail. And that's the aspect ratio. Presumably, the ratio of the game is around 19.5 by 9, also known as the iPhone ratio. Yes, the same device where your brain deteriorates from watching cat yeah. edits on TikTok. Our character starts to open their eyes and we see someone in front of us. This is our protagonist. We have an objective. Eat breakfast. Out of the bat, we can tell that this is a point and click adventure game. Something we have seen before in Milk Outside. There are a lot of options to click, but they are not important to the game, but they are necessary to understand our protagonist and the lore. When clicking on some objects in the room, we can see how she reacts to them. Like how the painting calms her mind and the bed being, ooh, ah, so eepy. The color palette of her world is bland and faded. All the objects are familiar, but they don't seem to mean anything. Or maybe it looks so different because we are in some sort of this nightmarish world similar to her world. On her desk, you can see from the posters to the notebooks and even the water bottle, you can tell that she's studying hard for an exam. In the hallway, trying to interact with objects will be rejected as our character wants to eat first. Nothing else happens until you reach the window, and you see something across. Now, this is the most embarrassing moment of my gaming career. In the kitchen, you are supposed to get your plate. However, I did not know where it was and I tried 3 attempts and failing and then I received an achievement where I failed of getting breakfast 3 times before the chapter 1 achievement. God fucking damn. <sighs> anyway, breakfast. Yippee! When trying to clean your dishes however, the box from our room is here for some reason. When we check the sink however, a pair of scissors appear, covered in blood. Trying to leave the kitchen, you are suddenly teleported into a this strange corridor with books and calendars with date marked and highlighted surrounding the area. We all get that sense of our character's mindset, so focused on organizing her studies but rarely prioritizing herself. Moving forward, piles of textbooks once she is used for exam stride away from the exit door. As you go through the door, you see somebody.
There is a mysterious man who most people on the internet call him the Calendar Man. He is as clueless as you are as to where we are. The man does say that this area is a library. Beautiful, isn't it? He describes his unhealthy work ethic, making him feel uncomfortable and wanting to go back home. This could suggest how uncomfortable she is when confronting her work ethic that's similar to the calendar man's, and the only option she has is running away from her problems. After appearing back into the hallway, you now want to brush your teeth, but the door on the bathroom is locked. <laughs> Whilst this footage plays on, there's one detail I love about the writing, and it's how unprocrastinated our character is. She's very strict in on only doing that one particular thing, and not wanting to do other things like going outside, or even sleep. I'll get more into the more visual signs of the character's mindset, but this is such a clever way of understanding our character. After we find the bathroom key, we see the calendar man again outside of our window. We don't know what he says, but he points up. Before we understand what it means, vanishes. Going into the bathroom, nothing seems out of the ordinary, but of course, we have to brush our teeth. The whole bathroom has transformed into this disgusting and decomposed room, now with a gaping hole at the center and a pair of eyes staring at us. The calendar man appears behind her. He says to her that you're running out of time and it's for her to break the loop, for her to figure out what she forgot about before leaving again. Before I leave the bathroom, there's one detail I want to point out. When she interacted with the bathtub, she talks about how it calms her down and it's a special place for her. When we see it again, a mannequin appears on it. The way it's positioned, it's almost exactly like hers. After we leave the bathroom, something doesn't feel right, and we turn to the hallway to discover this. At this point of the chapter, you are able to achieve two possible endings. Our character is now focused on one thing, getting out of the water. I gotta get the hell out of here! <laughs> Trying to unlock the front door doesn't work, but we do have an attic. Only thing we now need is to something to pull it on it. Ah yes, my trusted pulling stick. Whatever you call it. After finding it, we ascend up the stairs to find our attic is altered to be this weird scene of bodies and trap doors, but with an exit at the end. We interact with the bodies on the ground and discover that it's our bodies. As we move forward to the front, something shows up. Now obviously this is not how it really ends. If we rewind back to when she's being grabbed and pay attention to the dialogue, she says something about not having anything to defend herself. This gives us a clue into finding something to protect ourselves. If we search around more and reach to the sink once again, you realize you can pick up one more item, the scissors. Retracing back to where we were before and going through the attic, we have a different response.
we wake up in the bathtub. The colors of the house and our characters are different, more vibrant than the world we were in before. Of course, everything that happened was in the head. Yes, I need my daily pirate joke in every video. As she walks to the front door, she talks about her problems being gone, but needs time out of the house. Finally thinking about herself than anything else. Now, there's a lot to unpack here, but thankfully to get a better understanding of the lore, the developer left us with Explore Mode after getting both endings. Now, let me just say, studying is a really time-consuming task. I can relate to it, of course, and many others can't really handle that stress of exams. In most cases, exams define your future, and if you fail, you're essentially ruining your life. That's how our character feels. Having removed all distractions like manga and have only having study guides and textbooks. From the flower paintings and the way she describes looking through the windows, you can tell she loved nature, going outside, feeling the wind and sun against her face. But she couldn't do that. She was trapped in her own house. Her mind was filled with books and calendars, most likely deadlines for exams. There have been signs of her depression leaking around the game. Her bloody scissors are most likely her attempted suicide, and we also encounter a dark shadowy figure lingering around her back. In the attic, where we see different alternative versions of herself, where she dies because of the pressure of time, she couldn't handle it anymore. That's where the calendar man comes in. He is someone who follows the same routine and mindset as her, but he's the only conscience that helped her make the right decisions. It was only until she came back home and then she realized the counterman was there to help her and hopes one day they will meet again. The trap door, a door that never existed, was a representation of her problems and her confronting and accepting that yes, she has a problem. Once she realizes it, she's able to work on it and become more of who she is. In the end, she got a great mark, but was it worth the trouble of feeling mentally drained every day? She can finally take baths, a place to distress herself, can feel relaxed and less tense and finally look at herself in the mirror and feel happy about her life and her future. This game is really short and dirt cheap, but told an amazing story with so much meaning in the dialogue and the objects and the location. There's so much to love about this game. If you love Milk Outside, then I would highly recommend for you to play this. However, there's a special secret ending in the game. All you have to do at the start of the game is to repeatedly click on the bed and sleep. And that's it. Getting a good night's sleep is worth more than anything in the world. Get some sleep guys, including you Socket. We all deserve some. Thank you guys for watching this video, and I'll see you guys again next time. Hey guys, uh, this is a bit unscripted, so bear with my with the pauses and all that. Uh, thank you guys so much for the for your immense patience. I know I've been away from YouTube. Um, I've been trying to be on more film sets because I'm taking a film degree, and I want more work. But obviously, I I love YouTube and I want to keep doing this. So I've been taking the month off of November to just work on YouTube. And I have some really exciting projects uh, I can't wait to announce once it's done uh, in development stages. Uh, two really exciting projects I've been really developing during my break. So uh, don't mind the car noises, please. But yeah, I'm uh, sorry again for the delay of videos. Uh, but I am back, sort of. And there's a big video coming out at the end of this year that I've been working on for about uh, half, let's say half of a year. So yeah, I'm really excited to finish that off. Anyway, have a guy you guys have a really wonderful day and I'll see you guys next time. See ya.